Yo ho, uh, I'm back again, it's hot, uh, I'm gonna keep this one short again. I keep saying that as late, I just, I don't know what's going on. <sighs> also didn't really sleep last night, so that's partially, partially a problem. So yeah, uh, the Wild Hunt, Beast, Hatsumira, let's go, to defeat this lot. Time has come to carefully consider the meaning of those words. Governments that commit inhumane atrocities must be punished. However, a creeping fear has war wormed itself into the minds of ev even Whistler's most fervent naysayers. No matter how much they try to resist, they might meet a similar fate. Such sentiments started among the troops, but have slowly seeped into the general populace. After seeing Irkutsk reduced to ashes, the inhabitants of the neighboring countries have become especially restless. They feel like they must do something, anything, but with no outlet for their strong anti-war sentiments, they've started pointing their anger at Baraul. The, even the countries that had previously supported Baraul, or those that were indifferent, and anti-Baraul demonstrations have cropped up. And their governments can't ignore the will of the people. They all remained inert as anti-war sen uh, sentiments grew. But when the Principality of Whistler began experimenting with long-range missiles, most countries cut off all aid to Baraul. <laughs> Baraul is only a volunteer army, not formally backed by any state. Due to the organization's lack of official status, it is near impossible for it to support itself without external aid. Human or, humane or not, the definition of justice is determined by the winner. If you win, you're a glorious national hero. And if you lose, you're nothing but a bandit. And in one single explosion of a bomb, Baraul has become a gang of bandits. Forced to make a decision, we came to a painful conclusion. Baraul will this そうじゃ。こうなってしまえば、もうそれしか道はない。押し返し。分かっておる。泥を皆を引きずり込むわけにはいかぬのじゃ。マジーの太陽と戦争反対派の声が急に大きくなり始めた。それに巨大な力を持つ一つの国家が<笑> ボークンビスラの目付け役であるとな。ところがじゃ。見せしめのごとく巨大な拳を振り下ろされれば、やはり危ぶむわけじゃ。そんな時であるからこそ、我々バラウールが強くあるべきなのではありませんか。ワルテ
私も気持ちの上ではリズラとの最終決着をつけるつもりじゃった受けた恩は倍返し売られた喧嘩は10倍返しというやつじゃじゃがなそれはあまりにも無謀じゃそれこそ自滅しに行くようなものじゃからのそれゆえに最終作戦への参加は希望者のみを参加させようとも思った Even if you exempt soldiers with family back home, it would be absurd. We'd be implying the lives of soldiers without families are expendable. Well, Lin Shin and Sorkin must have heard Yukikaze's words loud and clear as they merely stood still, their eyes drawn to their feet. But they, if they looked up, the deep regret in their hearts would spill out in anguish, sobs, and tears. They fully understand their orders, but for soldiers that were ready to fight to the death, that the order to live on takes a lot of effort to swallow. It's an unbearably bitter, heavy, and suffocating order. I'm all surprised and slightly let down by the response. They made the decision to abandon their country and carry out Yukikaze's will. I thought they would insist on continuing to serve her and possibly even try to convince her to build a new kingdom. Even if they accepted the decision to disband Baraul, I thought they would at least try to finish what Ikikaze had started on their own, demand that the ship and all its weapons be handed over to them. Even if the people of their home country have dismissed Ikikaze as a warmongering princess, them, she is their one and only ruler. Which means that her word is law. Because she knows the extent of their loyalty, she can't take them with her into this war. If Ikikaze were to step forward and fight, They would follow, we move a future filled with nothing but pain and suffering away at them. That must be why they wordlessly accepted her orders. They understand that if they finish, wish for a brighter future, they will have to walk forward with their own feet and create it with their own hands. So. So, the people Even though Whistler's resources may be depleted to the point that they called for a ceasefire, they don't know when they might attack again. Those who had been summoned to repair the flagship ship Alamilikan and those who had been working on, around the clock to procure new weapons and ammunition, Kikaz's words have been a bolt from, must have been a bolt from the blue. And all the troops from different tribes had gathered in the desert, some got excited thinking that the ba final battle was finally at hand, while others secretly let out deep sighs and resignation. But nobody had expected that they might suddenly be dismissed. After a brief silence, the whole crowd is abuzz with murmurs. When I listen carefully to try and pick up some words, one quick question I keep hearing is Will we even be able to go back? I expected an outcry of confusion, agitation, and anger and indignation to overtake some of them. But the truth hasn't, maybe the truth hasn't quite sunk in yet. I spot a few familiar faces in the crowd. They all exchange glances in a daze as they're stunned by the sudden and uneventful end of the group. Is this really okay? Do we really make the right decision? Questions like these keep swirling through my head. Some people glare at me as if they were about to assault me with questions and accusations at any second. The piercing gaze seems to be asking me, Are you really okay with this? I respond to them with a blank stare, hitting that, that, them that this is definitely not okay. It's the only choice we had. Eventually, the soldiers seemed to wrap their heads around the truth. The one they removed the Baraul patches from the shoulders of their uniforms and began to burn them. The sight of all those soldiers with their troubled faces illuminated as they consigned their insignias to the flames is truly heartbreaking. We have not lost this war. 
Definitely haven't given up on any me by any means. That's why it pains us so much that we have to do this. Our feet, which trembled with fear and enmity when we gritted our teeth and headed into battle, now shaking with frustration and restlessness as we reluctantly shuffled towards the fires. Some faces show expressions of resignation and relief, while grief and misery are etched into others. Others stare blankly ahead, trying to hide their feelings. Looking at their faces, I had been telling myself that I did everything that I could, so this starts to slip away from me. Confession I must never show my subordinates almost forms on my face. While I do feel frustration and resentment inside of me, it is a strange kind of sentimentality to cause my chest to tighten the most. Many soldiers have lost comrades in this war. Just as many have lost their families. They may have survived, but the thought that they have, will have to live on without being given a chance to avenge the fallen gives me a intense grief. Familiar voices reach my ears, turn around to see their familiar faces. Some of them are hesitating to throw their patches into the fire. Send me questioning glances. Give them any answers. It takes everything I've got just to send them as resigned glance back. Eventually, they too burnt their patches, finally having given up. One patch, and two. One by one, the Baraul emblems go up in flames. Watch the smoke rise in silence. Go home. So, about to break the silence, pathetic socks start rising from the crowd. Seems like the brawny soldiers can't bear their grief any longer. Tears are contagious. One started crying, the floodgates were opened, and others followed. As they tossed their badges into the fire, vows they had made to their comrades who had perished, to avenge their deaths, no matter what, turned into smoke. This is a funeral for Paraul. Everything we have done is reduced to ash and smoke. Smoke <laughs> Some soldiers remain unsure what to do and not quite willing to give up. Others start getting ready to head home immediately. Several soldiers scramble to their feet at that call. The fraternity people crowd into the Laos wagon, which normally only seats ten. They are only allowed to bring any weapons, equipment, and supplies that won't identify them as former Barau soldiers. The soldiers on the Laos wagon are bringing as many personal items and supplies as they can carry, bulging backpacks on their backs. They're sleeping bags around their necks, their hands filled with rations. Laos wagon groans under their weight. <laughs> now, if any bugger sticks around, it'll be a bellyache for those who wish to leave. You have to leave with everyone else. So, Scar. <laughs> さいわいなことに正規軍に戻るための書類は用意してもらえるそうだ。自分は正規軍に帰る。そういうお前はどうする。一緒に正規軍に戻るか。どうするかな。元々俺は正規軍の水が湾からバラウールに参加したわけだし
何もしないよりは何かの慰めにはなるのかもしれんな<笑>一郎さん俺たちももうひよっこじゃないっすよ大丈夫っす何も心配ないっすハッ<笑> right. You're the bloke I'm most worried about Zontan Something about your face that tells me you're gonna get seduced by gold digger and she'll have the scales off your back ハハハひでえ言われよっすね気をつけるっす And go. The others won't leave until you do. Hi. Ichiro san. O genki de. Mata isre. Doko ka de o i suru kikai wa aru no de shou ka. I'm sure we will as long as we're alive. The mind will let us say about you. To have a life full of purpose. The registers will be burned. But that doesn't change the fact that you were loyal soldiers. Stand proud. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Hi. Deva. お先に失礼させていただきます。Dismissed. Dismissed. A one short word is easy enough to say. The time we spent together was relatively short. We may be from different tribes. But we're all brothers in arms who risked our lives fighting together. This attachment I feel towards my subordinates is making me feel a bit uneasy. Is this really the right decision? Is there really not another way? No, there's no point in thinking about it any further, but the moment I was freed from my heavy responsibilities, a strange emptiness took its place. At least, as a man, I can comfort myself with the thought that I did everything I could to move on with my life. Unlike the comrades I've had to leave behind in their graves. But for women, it's not that easy. So many women fought just as hard as us men in this war. Even harder, they willingly gave up on it. All the comforts other women take for granted. I doubt they would give up so easily. Just as my head starts to spin at the prospect of dealing with them, Lieutenant Francois appears, standing broadly before me. He's as broadly as his short legs can muster. Hey, Ichiro! What's going on here? The body world is disbanding. We're picking up and shipping home less. What are you saying? Packing up. Those who don't agree with our decision are free to return to their home countries and volunteer for the official army. We can arrange for you to keep the rank you've atta- attained within Baraul. Sakusa! Sa! Nakama ga ippai shindan da zo! Ano choro senpai da te! Minna, minna! Ippai shindan da zo! So, why are you not the only one who lost friends and family in this war? Nesa! Nesa wa natoku shite r u n s k a 納得できる戦争などあるものかよそういうこと言ってんじゃねえっすよどうすんすか私はそうだな国に帰るさとはいえ私は翼をもがれた身だ正規軍に再志願するかどうかは焼けた町でも見てしばらく考えさせてもらうつもりだ<笑>何ですの私を睨まないでくださいまし。お前は、どうすんだよ。私は、一度本国へ帰って、両親の葬儀の手配をしたら、正規軍に戻りますわ。モーリン、あなたはついてこなくていいわ。ご家族のもとへお帰りなさい。ばあちゃん、軍にいることを、家族に反対されていたのでしょう。もういいのです、モーリー。これまで本当にありがとう。どうして<笑>もういいんですのよ。ありがとう、モーリー。どうしてそんなことを言うの寂しいじゃない、ばあちゃん。エレン、お前はうーん、そうだね。どうか住み込みで働けるレストランでも探して。
そこで働こっかなあくびすんなマジな話してんだよこっちはフラン一緒に来る<笑>引かねえよ私は正規軍に戻るそっか一郎さんはどうされますの、mm. sure. It's possible for me to go back to my country at this point I will go on a journey and try to find a way 正規軍には死がなさいませんの Nah, it's none of my business 関係ないって I've got no stakes in this fight The princess just happened to save my life If she orders me to put down my weapons, I have to obey Don't intend to force my ideology or principles upon anyone else I <laughs> don't care what you think Trust men, you can't trust men like me. It will serve as a good lesson. What are you trying to say? I know it's not up to me. Go home, lass. It's the only advice I can give you. So! Ichiro? I know. Keep an eye on her for me. I'll allow you a pint. Uh, okay. Ellen's the only one who probably gets what the fuck's going on, honestly. Like, Ellen's, like, acting like a airhead most of the time, but she, like, at the same time is the smartest one of the fucking group. Together with Maureen. Like, she probably realizes that he's not fucking happy about this either. <laughs> can be pretty ten tense at times, but even I understand the reason behind the tears in Fran's eyes. What has, been, what has she been fighting and suffering for until today? I'm gonna give up on a war after receiving just one painful blow. Then why start it in the first place? She trusted me, and despite us having our differences, we were able to overcome great difficulties by being open and frank with each other. But now the words go home have brought everything to an unsatisfactory end. It's not hard to imagine myself behaving the same way if it were me in Franz's position. She told her soldiers to wait until the moment to strike back arrives. Many of them will spend the next few years hiding in wait. However, that mindset would render our dissolution meaningless. So, so they are the same thing. Can't blame them. If I volunteered for the army right now, there would be a tons of dafties that would follow me mindlessly. Don't apologize. It would be like saying that everything's been you've been doing was a mistake, and that the deaths of those you, who fought for your cause were in vain. So, oh, Nagoka? さまには急務が与えられているであろう。何の用じゃ。そのことでちょっと相談したいことがあるんです。何じゃ。あの本当にバラウールは解散するんすか。もう決めたことじゃ。じゃあこの船はアルマーケードはどうするんすか。それはも
The demolition is to be carried out as scheduled. For the Faraou's dissolution, along with the planned demolition of the flagship on the Milikan, has already reached the neighboring countries. As the preparations get on the way, it gathers the attention of various officials and reporters from neighboring the neighboring countries. In case we don't get a CG by the time I decide to end it. Naturally, the information has re reached Vistla as well. Vistla ordered for an instrument of capitulation and disarmament of Arbaraul to be submitted, as well as the surrender of the flagship Alumilukan. However, Baraul is under no obligation to comply. The demolition of its flagship would serve as evidence of the dissolution of the organization and the refusal to capitulate serves as an indication of our future intentions. After confirming that all crew have left the ship, we gathered all the weapons and ammunition the soldiers had left in the ship's hangar bay and awaited its ultimate demise. The swords and firearms, to which we once had trusted our lives on the battlefield, have had their Baraul emblems scraped off. However, the pile of weapons did not strike me as unsightly by any means. All the swords were sharpened to perfection. Not a single nick was visible on their blades. The firearms have not even a single speck of rust. They were well cared for and maintained. It felt sad to part with them. By the time the clock strikes noon, all the weapons have gap and gathered, and all the crew members that remained are witnessing witness to the demolition of the Alamilla Khan. The ammo and fuel stored in a hangar cause an ear piercing explosion, and in the blink of an eye, a large ball of flame engulfs the entire ship. Before our watchful eyes, the Alamilla Khan collapses onto itself like a piece of crumpled paper and sinks into the sands of the desert. Having witnessed the dissolution of Baraul and themselves, the gathered officials and journalists return to their own countries, one group at a time. The fire continues burning for several hours, with the crackling of the flames only interrupted by sporadic explosions. As the light of the day begins to fade, the blaze finally subsides, like a morning candle that has, been, that has burned up. It signals the demise of Baraul, the resistance army that fought so tenaciously. The next morning, Kikaze and I decided to also burn the cook, uh, code books and military record records, which we hesitantly held on to until the last minute. With this, all records of Baraul's, ex Baraul's existence will be erased. It's not as if this act will erase all the battles we fought from history. Burning this record that accounts for countless soldiers' blood and tears feels like burning a part of ourselves. However, in doing so, we can at least ensure that the countries who supported Baraul are not held responsible after the war. Question I have already I have asked myself over and over arises once more. Is this really the right thing to do? In war there's no right things one can do. However, sometimes it's impossible to move on unless you convince yourself that you've made the right decision. Cousin, should I return to the castle? <laughs> 所詮私は神の日に身を焦がして楽園を追放された身じゃ。私のような飛び鳥を迎え入れれば国ごと呪われる。Don't want to risk bringing the sparks to war back home. Kazuya and I stay behind, watching all the discharged soldiers leave. Then, when it was just the two of us, we took to the sky without telling anybody our destination. I'm surprised that Linshin per permitted this. I'm sure he only did so begrudgingly. I also doubt that he truly understands us, but he didn't voice a single complaint at his gesture of him if you Kikaze and me departing together. Not a word was spoken on what we were going to do from now on or where we were going to go. If we moved with a particular goal in mind, somebody would be able to predict it, which would lead to more trouble. But as long as we're together, it doesn't matter where we are. There's a strange sense of confidence that things will work out somehow. We wander around with no particular goal. We're not supposed to have a goal. Eventually we lose track of how many days we spend like this. Not that we bother trying to keep track. We soar through the skies, going wherever the wind takes us. Winds take us. We rest when we get tired and eat when we get hungry. When the rains we land and take shelter beneath the trees, honestly staring up at the sky. Sometimes you can catch it. Kaza teaches me the lizard script. Our days pass by uneventfully with no plans to go anywhere and do anything specific. 
Once, when we went to a small town to buy water and supplies, we picked up some leaflets that the Whistler army had dropped. They clearly stated that Baraul, which had repeatedly rebelled against the Principality of Whistler, had been disbanded, and their ancient warship had been destroyed accordingly. It also said that the bounty of its ringleader, Yukikazajin Blood, would be raised to 15 million gilm to be awarded for whoever captured her and turned her in. Any useful information regarding her whereabouts would be rewarded with 150,000 gilm. We both had to chuckle at this. Back is on a starred. In a different town, we found leaflets announcing a bombing raid by Whistler. It was addressed to anybody still engaging in sporadic acts of resistance and listed the names of 24 major cities that were supposedly scheduled to be bombed. Anybody still engaging in sporadic acts of resistance, huh? I still really like this outfit. <laughs> I can sort of imagine what they're thinking. The lizard princess may have given up, but we'll never surrender. There must still be there must still be tribes with that kind of attitude. I was trying to be subtle about it, but uh, you sure don't mince your words. Maybe they're trying to instill fear in children who can't read yet by using drawings. They're telling children who still have their entire future ahead of them that this is what happens when you disobey Whistler. It's disgusting. Can't read Whistler's script. Uh, can you read it for me? どう年8月。イルクジカ王国ベラスコ市にバガビスラ空軍はマジーの太陽を投下。5万人以上の反抗文書を処分した。我々ビスラは、これらの戦火により終戦を早め、より大きな被害が予想される戦いを回避することに成
Even if it meant showing their hand early. I'm having a serious think over it. Don't call it funny. Must be getting bored of looking at my serious face by my mouth, so you should be grateful for the variety I'm giving you. Anyway, Arcjean is already aware of the tactic Whistler employed when they used the ultra high altitude white catfish to drop McGee's son. Now that Barul has been disbanded, Nago has returned to her original post and is working on mass-producing her Nago-type hardware. <laughs> we'll be careless for Whistler to attempt an air raid now. So unless the city at the top of the bombing list still exists, the other countries should have little to fear. You have the money for that? <laughs> へえ、に退職金を払ってしまったてまえ。いささか懐が心もとなくもあるが。何二人で白鵬度食ったところで、まだ少しは余裕があろう。というか、いい加減つったさかないや野草の料理には空いたわ。贅沢を言わば、柔
九時。ヌーミンのクワッツハポーナを持てい。十人前じゃ。Why not so loud? なぜじゃ。声を上げねば店員が気づくまい。That's true, but... あの、お客様。そのようなお声を出されますと。ん。なんじゃ。Consider your current position. <sighs> Kaz is the general of a defeated army. If her identity got out, I doubt that everybody would greet her back with warm smiles. Those who never liked her to begin with, but had their reservations about openly expressing their opinion, are now free to speak ill of her as much as they please. Even those who previously supported you, Kaz may not be understanding of why she decided to dissolve Baraul. Maybe the latter uh, grasp. That group is even more better than the former, considering the expectations they had for Baraul were utterly betrayed. You might think of it as their own fault for harboring unrealistic expectations in the first place, however, that is not something that can be said in public right now. If our dissenters teamed up and mobbed us right now, nobody would come to our aid. Fortunately, it appears that none of the regulars who know you because they're about to speak up. Perhaps they'll realize that her presence became known. That if her presence became known, it's not unthinkable that the restaurant might be stormed by an angry, by an angry mob that would indiscriminately attack everybody inside. Apologies, sir. We didn't mean to cause any trouble. We'll leave immediately after we're done with our meal. Yeah, no, go, go, you could. Sorry. We're causing the owner more trouble than our patronage is worth. <sighs> Mere sight of the command of a defeated army stuffing her face with meat could be enough to instill hosti uh, instigate hostility. But I understand how people might feel. I've witnessed the day she derived, deprived herself of anything but the most basic ra rations of after Baraul's dissolution. So I want to make sure she gets to eat her fill once in a while without having to feel guilty. Forget about it for now, though. Feel free to eat and drink as much as you want today. I'm here in case anything happens. I'm here in case anything happens. お前に面倒をかけるぐらいなら、野草をかじっておる方がマシじゃん。さっさと食うて、さっさと祈るとしよう。パージュー、それは私のセリフじゃ。苦労をかけるの。I'm just walking about that adjust for myself. お待たせいたしました。When the owner plays the steaming plate on plates on the table, I can't help but notice that he has been rather generous with his servings. Just touching gesture that signals to us that he won't kick us out of his shop no matter the circumstances. The walls around us are proudly adorned with medals and other memorabilia that, must have, that he must have earned in his youth. The framed certificate of honor tells me that he was once enlisted in a volunteer army. There he single handedly managed to stop the advance of an enemy Laos tank battalion by laying landmines it, in its path. He was honorably discharged after sustaining serious injuries in action. In this day and age, it is more common for influential figures to be poisoned by somebody they trusted than to die on the battlefield, though. The restaurant itself appears to be quite homely. The food they served is presented on silver platters. When silver comes in contact with arsenic, it changes color. This allows people to enjoy their meals without having to worry about arsenic poisoning. <laughs> That's yes, right. She'd rather trust someone and die laughing at her own foolish gullibility than live the rest of her life in paranoia and fear. I suppose that's Yukikaze's philosophy. Punctuating her bold, as a punctuating her bold statement, she starts stuffing her face with grilled Newman and chews while making little noises of appreciation. Wouldn't think she was a princess from the way she eats. Sure, like this, chowing down on meat with a broad smile on her face. I'm filled with a deep sense of confidence that everything will be okay as long as I'm with her, despite our uncertain future. Never before I ever heard of a princess who lifts her soldiers' spirits just by eating in front of them, but I think it's that's part of her personality that makes her so likable. Why aren't you planning to eat those ten servings? You aren't planning to eat those ten servings all by yourself, mm -hmm. are you? Boy, don't <laughs> forget to get some veg down your gob. <laughs> What's this supposed to mean? It's fine this way, though. Might actually work in our favor. Because nobody would ever think that a lass who stuffs her cheeks like a squirrel could possibly be a princess. Take a glass or glance around the restaurant while pretending to look at the wall menu on the wall and notice that nobody seems to be paying us any attention. 
Their focus on the conversations around us, ignoring Kaz's boorish country girl with poor table manners act for a moment. I hear some things I'd rather not have heard. Some people are lamenting Barawu's pitiful loss. But most are accusing us of causing more damage than necessary with our persistent rebellion. All he did was rub whistle of the wrong way. Baru must be a convenient scapegoat. The people try to vindicate themselves by blaming Baru for everything strikes me as extremely unpleasant and almost makes me shake with anger. Hey, new villa did you see? This place was to be a new place. If you put it on the weapons, you wouldn't have to attack them. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. 冗談じゃないぞビスラにマジーの太陽を使わせたのはバラウールだそのバラウールが解散した今空爆に何の意味がある落とすのならアークジーンの王城に落とせ俺たちには関係ないそうかなアークジーンにマジーの太陽が落ちたら次はどこに落ちると思う自分の頭の上には落ちないという保証がどこにあるいざ落とされたとなった時お前は仕方がないで納得できるのかまったく面倒を起こすだけ起こして、勝手に解散するとはな。そんな迷惑だ。Really are so arrogant to think that nothing will happen to them as long as they don't down, they throw down their weapons. Or are they really just that daft with nothing but air and their thick skulls? <laughs> 望み通り武器を捨てた結果がこれじゃ。自分たちの平和は、自分たちで作らねばならんということを学ぶ時が来たのじゃ。Already knew it would happen, and there's no need to be so cheeky about it now. I mean to deny that civilians are inherently innocent. It's fair to blame the military for something. Things. That's simply what our job entails, but it is what it is. And many people are daring enough to stand up for themselves when, ju when a gendarme jumps out at you the moment you criticize Whistler. It is the military that turned this into a country where you can't even speak freely. However, I believe that a world where everybody can just say what they want would be a lot tougher to live in. Now that Barawul is gone, what hope do people have left、uh, le have left to cling to? They're not even ashamed of themselves for taking this makeshift peace for granted. Well, they merely live the rest of their lives in fear while nervously looking up at the sky. How many soldiers are left that would be willing to stand up and fight for people like them? That's why this is a gamble. Don't you think it's about time you could gather? <laughs> About time for people to have calmed down and become aware of the path they must follow. At the very least, there are two people here in the room who are willing to stand up despite everything. That's one thing I, that's one thing I can say for certain. Somewhere! Still at 46%. No matter what you, how you try to justify it, war is nothing but manslaughter in the end. Those who kill are destined to go to hell. But where do those who were killed in the hellish bat on the hellish battlefield go? Maybe they are destined to keep wandering the battlefield forever, left with nothing but their regrets and nowhere to go. Doko ma de tsuite kuru ki da yo. That's a nice one. Huh? Hmm? Jane yo. Zutta atashi no ato tsuite ki yagatte. Utto shin da tsu no. どっかってどこ知るかよどっかの料理屋で働くんだろあたしの後ついてきたって仕方がねえだろ心配だからは<笑>あんたに心配されるようになっちゃいよいよあたしも焼きが回ったってもんじゃね余計なお世話だっつのほら正規軍に再志願するんじゃなかったのするよ言われなくたってするよそれはいつもう10日も経つよ。うるせえな分かってんよ言われなくても今のフラン、一郎と同じ。はぁ、あ、死に場所を探してる。<笑>だから、目を離すなって、言われた。誰にだよ。ないぞ。うわイラつくなんだてめほら。私お腹空いた知るかよだったらさっさと軍に再志願しろよ飯ぐらい食わせてくれんだろうよ一緒に行こうよはっバカバカしい私らがこうしてもう10日だぞ
未だにイルクージカに救援を送るか話し合ってるような軍に戻ってどうすんだよ私に怒鳴られてもな分かってんよだから黙ってたんじゃねえかそれをてめえがしつこく何度も何度もうぜっつの飛んで逃げればいいのにああ流化して飛んで逃げれば私フランには追いつけないようっせえなあんなことしたら、おめえ、あたしのこと探して、ずっと追っかけてくるだろうが、ふっとしい。私しが心配だからうるせえあやん。People sometimes get upset or annoyed, or sometimes even end up hurting each other. But when someone decides to stick with you despite that, it's incredibly reassuring, and they'll be the first person you can ask for help when you're feeling lost. In war, we share the same fate. Develop bonds thicker than blood. Reach a level of trust that can't be described in mere words. That's what it means to be comrades. <laughs> You're trying to sniff your own feet? <laughs> Knees, I mean. Also, uh. Made Maureen. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. いつまでそうしてるのかなって思って私のことはもう構わないでと言ったでしょあなたは実家に帰りなさいと言ったのにどうして私についてくるの私の家族とも連絡がつかないし街道が封鎖されてるらしくて家に帰ることもできないから飛んで帰れば道など関係ないのではなくてそれはそうなんだけど。私の家族のことで遠慮していますの下手な同情をするつもりはないよ<笑>お父様にお母様それにお兄様まであの日イルクージカにいらっしたなんてどうしてこんなことにあーちゃん<笑>分かっていますわ私とていつまでもこうしているつもりはありません。本当に正規軍に戻るのあんなに嫌っていたのに。他に戦う方法がないのなら、仕方がないですわ。できると思うの今のあの正規軍で。<笑>覚えてる昔、私とまーちゃんがまだ正規軍の観光生だった頃、前線から交代するエンバニー巡将の護衛として、隠密撤退作戦に参加したことがあったよね覚えてますわあの時撤退路の街道で民間人が攻撃されているのを私たちの部隊が見殺しにしようとしたことがあったよねそう子供を連れた母親がウィズラの偵察部隊に攻撃されているのを見て私は命令を無視して飛び出しましたわその結果部隊全員で対処に当たって隠密行動も露見することなく事を収めることができたけど<笑>覚えてますわバカ野郎お前一人の味方で部隊を危険にさらすな死ぬなら一人で死ねクズめ目先のものだけしか見えてないやつが偉そうに勝手な自己判断をするなそれで英雄になったつもりかいいかよく聞け戦場での英雄など邪魔なだけだ飛竜兵になるのがなぜ難しいのかわかるか周りに迷惑をかけるバカを排除するためだ自殺ならよそでやれ俺の舞台を巻き込むなクズてめえなんかいらねえよバ<笑>そんな風に口汚く罵られてこっぴどくぶん殴られましたわでもね別にあの隊長を擁護するわけじゃないけどあれはあれで正しかったんだと思うよああやって、純将の目の前で、純将がドン引きするぐらい怒鳴り散らして叱ってくれたから、純将自身が、もういいではないかって取りなしてくれたんだし、もしああしてなければ。学兵とはいえ、まー、あ、ちゃんは軍法会議にかけられてたかもしれない。わかってますわよ。今となってみれば、あの隊長の言っていることが正しいのもわかってますわ。でも、それが正しいことだと分かっていても、見て見ぬふりはできないのが私なのですわ。だからこそ、幹部候補生の椅子を蹴ってまで、バラウールに入った
今さら正規軍に戻ったところで思うようには戦えないそれは分かっていますわそれでも他に戦う方法がないなら家族の敵を討つ方法がないならどんな思いをしてでも軍に戻って戦いますわうんでもねそんなんじゃ死んじゃうよ恨みの感情を抱えたまま飛ぶやつは死ぬって一郎さんが言ってたもの<笑>あなたは一郎さんの言うことを鵜呑みにしすぎですわ仕方がないよ私一郎さん好きだし好きな人の言葉ってそれだけで特別に聞こえるものだよモーリンあなたあの方は姫様の大切な方なんですのよ分かってるよそんなことでも好きになるだけなら誰の男を好きになろうと私の勝手でしょそれはへりくつではありませんのじゃあまー、あ、ちゃんは一郎さんのこと嫌いなのそんなこと言ってないでしょというかそういう問題ではありませんわ好きになっても無駄だから好き嫌われるのが嫌だから好きなのに好きであることから目を背け続けるの<笑>ねえまー、あ、ちゃん嫌われることを恐れていたら誰も好きになんてなれないんだよ分かってますわよ好きなんだ<笑>自分でもどうしてあんな男が気になるのか分かりませんわ意地悪だしちっとも優しくなんかないし背も低くてそのくせ態度ばかり大きくてでも戦場であの小さな背中を見るとホッとするよねあの背中に引っ張られていると何も怖くない一人前になって一人でも戦えると思っていてもあの人が前に来ると涙が出そうになるほど怖いです。Is he sure the war against Whistler with his,、uh, with his battle harm? <笑>それが戦場で感じる錯覚だとしても好きなものは好きなんだよ。でもそれは所詮かなわぬ思いですわ。姫様もきっと一郎さんのことが好きでそしてきっと一郎さんも姫様のことをどうしてまー、あ、ちゃんの好きになる男の人はまー、あ、ちゃんのことを好きになってくれないんだろうね本当そうですわねちゃんと人を好きになるって難しいね<笑>どうしてこんな話になったんですのあれなんでだろうね<笑>あなたがおかしな話を始めるからですわただでさえ頭がぐちゃぐちゃしてますのに迷ったり悩んだりした時は空を見ればいいんだよ上を見てさえいればそれ以上は下には落ちないってそう一郎さんが言ってましたってあなた、どれだけ一郎さんを崇拝していますの一郎さん。今頃どこで何をしていらっしゃるのかしらさあ。でも、どこで何をしていらっしゃっても、あの方の身勝手な性格だけは変わらないような気がしますわ。会いに行ってみようか。はいどこへですのというか、あの方の行き先に心当たりがあるんですのないけど、でも、探し物をするときは、最後に見かけた場所から探し始めるよね。人と物では違いましてよ。それに、迫撃砲は、一度着弾した場所には、もう落ちませんわ。人と迫撃砲も違うよ、まー、あ、ちゃん。でも確かに、こうして身動きも取れないまま、ただ落ち込んでいるよりは、いくらかマシかもしれませんわね。迷ったら飛べ風の吹く方へ。ですわね。アークジンキングダムジューノーカーソル。アークジンキングダムジューノーカーソル。うんだと。それだけではない
ビスラからの要求には王族関係者の処刑も含まれているバカな政権の異常に王城の明け渡し挙げ句に王族の処刑だと王族の首を差し出せば国民は奴隷として生かしてやると言っているようなものだ建物で,ではないが飲み込める条件ではないしかも一週間以内に条件を飲まなければ王都にマジーの対応を投下するなどともはや交渉ではない脅迫だ交渉する気など花からないのだろうなそれで執政官や軍令部の意見は意見は割れている一旦は全面的な無条件降伏を受け入れてその上で再交渉をという意見もあれば全国民を挙げての徹底抗戦を唱える意見もある。しかし、徹底抗戦と言っても。ビスラの空襲を阻止しようにも、現状の防空能力では対抗しきれないのは、すでにビラ巻きを阻止できなかった時点で明らかだ。王都への空襲などありえないと鼻で笑っていた防空省の連中もイルクージカの剣で顔を青くして今頃になって名護式金物の量産化に腰を上げたがもう遅い執政官はもとより一部の王族関係者はもう国外逃亡の準備をしているという話だ国を捨てて逃げるというの高戦派で有名な軍令部のジェラルド大佐は徹底抗戦の構えを見せてはいるがね喉元に剣を突き立てられたような状況で何ができるわけでもなしこんな状況であっても戦争に反対する基地司令のグーニー少将を暗殺するのではないかとの噂バカな目の前に国家の危機が迫っているというのにうちわで新たなあらジェラルド大佐はそのまま王都を乗っ取って王都と共に玉砕するつもりでいるらしいそれは国家に対する反逆ではないか落ち着けあくまでも噂だそれにいかな全大戦で名を馳せた猛将とはいえ今はもう時代が違う老兵がいくら劇を吐いて呼びかけ回ったところで今時の若い連中は誰もついてはあこんだろうそうは言っても大佐の側近ともなれば従わなければならぬ身も少なからずあろう皆が行くなら我も行くのが今時の若者だろう近日中に海軍大臣の名で景気猛動を禁ずる命が下されジェラルド大佐は孔明罪で官籍を剥奪身柄は監禁されるだろうそれに最近の若者は我々が思うよりずっと冷静だそれはそれで頼もしいのか不甲斐ないのかやはり我々の手でバラウールを再結成するしかないのではないか国民を巻き込まないのであればとの条件付きで国王からは相変わらずの黙認を取り付けてはあるセイキ軍の軍人もまた国民だそれゆえにセイキ軍からの人員は避けんましてや未来ある若者を巻き添えにしていい戦でもなかろうこれは我々老兵の仕事だだが名護はすでに船に戻っておるのだろうあれはもともと王室付きの賢者だ軍には出航という形で参加しておったがあくまでも軍属であって軍人ではない民間という立場の方がまずいのではないか誰の命令でもなく動いておるのだ止める理由もなかろう義勇兵といえば聞こえはいいがな所詮はレジスタンスだ戦争が終わればその結果がどうであれ裁判にかけられるぞもちろん本人もそれは承知の上だそれでもやれることはやると言っておった今や将兵よりも義官の方がよほど勇敢だそういう者たちの犠牲を一人でも減らすために姫様はバラウールを解散なされたというのになそういえば貴様の副官の七尾はどうした最近姿を見ないが実家のレーゼバルトに返したん
七五少尉は王立孤児院の出身であろういやあまあだから私の実家に返したという意味だおお,おいよせおかしな勘ぐりはやめろそうは言ってもな貴様もご心臓をなくしてだいぶたとうそろそろ後添いをと考えてもおかしくあるまいバカを申せあれは娘だそれにあんなのを嫁にもらえば息苦しくてかなわんぞ。She just entered the room like, oh yeah, I heard you were talking shit! <笑>しかし、あの頑固者の七尾周囲が実家に帰れなどという言葉によくぞ従ったものだな。まあ、簡単ではなかったがな。というか、怖かった。怖かった一時で構わん私の実家に行って身を隠せと伝えたところえらく立腹しようってな総研様そこにお座りくださいと来たもんだまた正座をさせられたのかまたとは何だそれほど頻繁というわけではないぞでいつものように私がいなくて誰が総研様の面倒を見るのですと言われたわけだろうまあそうだがかつて猛しようと恐れられた創建ランバルト大佐が嘆かわしいことよやかましい貴様とて姫様に同じことをされれば逆らえまい姫の尻に敷かれるのと部下の尻に敷かれるのとでは同じ敷かれるにしても意味が変わってこいよ<笑>どうせ後から私も実家に戻るとでも言って納得させたのであろうどうするつもりだどうもこうもあるかおい先短き老兵のやれることをやるまでよ実家に置き去りとなれば七尾少尉はまた立腹するであろうなその時はまた正座でもしてわびればいい生きて帰ることがあれば何でもしてわびよういいのかそれで貴様とて姫様の命令に背くことになるのではないかふん私は貴様と違って姫様にわびるつもりなどないこれは私自身が選んだ道である墓石にもそう刻むつもりだもう墓の心配か老けたものだな昔。左十八度、行角三十二。竜王座一等星ベイルスを確認。南南東へ進路変身五秒前。もうバスティッチ。あざらわやとらえる。was in the fucking room。I know I was fucking all the night over here. Fuck you, moth people. I'm slowly but surely going insane. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and, uh. I'm 46%. <laughs> Bye.